first of all, we're just wired up totally different than our husbands, you know, <laughs> yeah. and, and it's yeah. by God's design, you know, they're not designed to feel what we feel. They're not designed. And so I think it's so important that we understand that our marriages, we're, we're part of God's kingdom. So we can't take our cues yeah. from the world. We can't take our cues from our right. culture. We have to right. go back to the word right. of God. I think for me and my husband, we have some natural boundaries in that I'm a morning person and he's a night person. So there is already some natural boundary and then I'm up really early and he's up really late. So we both already kind of get some alone time by the grace of God. God is so good. So we already have that natural boundary, but there's some other boundaries that we had to fight for that weren't as natural. And I think anyone that's watching today that maybe your marriage was founded on and bonded in a common goal, whether that's church, volunteering at church or ministry or entrepreneurship, you started a company together or you created art together or you serve in a church together. That's me and my husband. Something awesome about our relationship is that we had a common bond early on in that we both served our local churches. But what happened when we weren't careful with that is that that became what our marriage was all about all the time. And we didn't know how to have boundaries or have a marriage outside of that. And that was mostly on one of us. Um, And so over time, I realized I wanted to talk about work all the time. And my husband didn't want to talk about work all the time, but we were bonded through our our common goal and our common ministry. So to me, this is part of our marriage. Why doesn't he want to talk about it all the time? And I couldn't figure out what time of day to bring up certain things. And I couldn't figure out the best time or the best part of the week to bring up certain things. So I did this amazing, magical thing that I learned that I want to pass on to you. And I asked him, what is the best time for me to bring these things up? And I don't think every marriage is the same. And I don't think everyone's boundaries are the same. And I don't think you should do it exactly like how we do it. But when I asked my husband, hey, when is the best time for us to talk about some work things and ministry things and church things? Because I can tell it's not always the right time. Mm -hmm. And I thought you were into me because you wanted a minister to live with, but turns out you wanted a wife. So (laughs) help me be able to do that. And my, my husband said something really simply. He said, when I'm done with my work day and I come home, I think I'm done with my work day. What always helps me is when you text me in the middle of the work day and say, Hey, I have this to talk about when you get home, that I'm prepared the whole time mm-hmm. or I add it on to my work day. But when I come home and we've been resting for five hours and then all of a sudden there's a brainstorm project, I don't feel the most loved. <laughs> and you know, I felt like that was fair. Mm -hmm. And so something that we've learned in our marriage through different seasons of ministry and through many different projects, all which are important, all which are from God, all which are things that have bonded us and what make our marriage awesome is constant communication in every season. What's the best way for both of us to be our best selves for God and for each other and have the grace to let that change, to evolve, and so that we can put our best foot forward in ministry and for each other. There's so many books out there that, that, that are are there to explain to us that first of all we're just wired up totally different than our husbands you know <laughs> yeah. and and it's yeah. by God's design you know they're not designed to feel what we feel they're not designed and so i think it's so important that we understand that our marriages we're we're part of God's kingdom so we can't take our cues yeah. from the world. We can't take our cues from our right. culture. We have to right. go back to the word right. of God so that we can build a marriage that's going to last, that's, that's going to reflect his glory. Because the sooner that we embrace, actually embrace being humble, actually embrace loving your mate as Christ mm-hmm. loves you, yeah. actually embrace, you know, um, being willing to take down, actually embrace it you know, really God's way of loving, the sooner we're going to be fulfilled in our marriages, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, It takes humility. It it takes humility to ask for what you want, you know? Um, And when you do that, (laughs) you know, the only person who loses is the enemy. You win. Your husband win. Your kids win. If we would just embrace you know, marriage God's way. Yeah, I love what you're saying, Cece, about embracing our spouse's Um, in the role that they were meant to play, Mm -hmm. but not putting expectations on them that they were never created to fulfill, right? Because our spouse is not meant to be our savior. 
Right. And that's important for us right. to know in marriage. And it's important for us to know while we're dating mm. that we are not ultimately looking for someone to fulfill our, our greatest needs, to tell us who we are, what we're created to do, to give us our identity, our security, or our purpose. That can only come from Jesus oh, Christ. Amen. And so yeah. we are not yeah. looking for a savior. We're looking for a partner. Mm-hmm. We're looking for a partner who serves the same savior. Mm-hmm. And hopefully at our best, we help them be the best version of themselves and help them accomplish what God's called them to do. And hopefully at their best, they're helping us be the best version of ourselves and helping us accomplish what we want to do. But ultimately, once we find them, you know, we were never looking for a savior. That's good. We already found a savior. So all the weight of the world and all the expectations are not on this one person. Mm -hmm. This spouse is not my savior. This spouse is my partner. And I love, I love what you're saying, Hosanna, because because we have to be happy and whole before we ever get married. Because Mm -hmm. when we find ourselves in Christ, we have everything we need. Mm -hmm. We have satisfaction. Mm -hmm. We have peace. We have joy. We find all of that. It's not my husband's responsibility for me to have peace and joy. That is a heart matter inside of me that I have to have fulfilled by the Holy Spirit as, as empowering me to do That's what right. I'm called to do, to be a wife. My dad always said that that our family was the, our church in miniature. And if it didn't happen there, it wasn't gonna happen anywhere around us. Mm-hmm. And and so that comes, that that unity uh, in, in marriage and respect for each other. I'm supposed to see Matt the way God sees Matt. Mm-hmm. And that is my responsibility. Mm-hmm. And when I'm, in, when I'm discouraged or when I'm unhappy, um, I need to be going to the Lord for myself because it's my problem. And if yep. I get myself straight, I think my perspective on things is going to straighten out and and Matt won't be the one with the problem anymore because it's normally always me. <laughs> right. Isn't that right? Always. Every time I go to the Lord, Laurie, to pray on Alvin, the Holy Spirit always brings up me. And I'm like, I know you're going to tell me about him this time. <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> Always me. But it's so true. Yeah, because when, like you said, when you don't go to the Lord, then you are allowing, you're giving your husband more power than God has ever given him to, to take on. Absolutely. You're giving him yeah. the, the determ- he determines the factor of you being happy or not, or having mm-hmm. joy or not. And no one deserves that but Jesus. No one has you that know? power. No Absolutely. one, no one. Yeah. And so yeah. we have to go to the source and we have to love God and allow yeah. God to pour into us everything we need mm. so that we can love them out of our overflow. It's just a, a new way to think about marriage because so many of us it, it go into marriage hoping that marriage will make us happy and fully expecting it to. Right. And of course, marriage is joyful mm-hmm. and wonderful. But one mm-hmm. of the things, Les and I know, you know, we've been working with uh, marriage and counseling couples for three decades now that marriage doesn't make us happy. We make our marriages happy and that's how it works, you know, yeah, that's good. And that, yeah. and that just reverses the formula. You can have a delightfully joy filled, happy marriage. That's what you guys are talking about when you own, Oh, it's my role to make my marriage happy. Not because you're mm. doing the work of loving them as God should love them, but loving them beside them through God's power in you. And that's the thing, you know, just, just to fully expect, you know, I have the power to make this marriage happy by allowing God to love them through me, you know, Mm -hmm. and be loved. Yeah. Men need respect. You know, I'm always Mm -hmm. shocked. And the, and that's, the Bible says to Mm -hmm. wives respect Respect your husband. husband. I watch some of those programs that the boys are watching locked up abroad or locked up or people in prison and stuff. And I know we've got so many people watching even in prisons today. Their main thing, it's a, it's shocking how how much they say I was disrespected or they didn't respect mm, me. Yes. That's a big deal to men. And when yeah. we start start using our words and, and especially maybe to our children to put mm-hmm. down their father mm. in any way, whether they're your husband or your ex-husband, to put them down to disrespect something that's a part of our children's lives. Mm-hmm. I think it's just a horrible thing. 
Mm. You know, no matter what the circumstances are, we've got to uplift and keep our words on a higher level, a higher calling uh, that we're that we're supposed to live to and and not disrespect. And I think that's a huge thing even to our kids. You know, I love that. It's a deep need. It's a deep need for every human. But men, you're right. When when they lose respect, it devastates them. For for women, they feel more devastated when they feel unloved. And it's again, mm-hmm. you know, this is this is just how God hardwired us. But we both need both things. Here's the saving grace. When we go to God in prayer, it's okay to lament and grieve the things that we might be hurting over. You know, we can talk to God honestly about the flaws of the people in our life and we can, we can lament and we can even complain to God. That's a really different thing than taking them to that person directly because that's when the magic happens in prayer. Like you guys have already said, where God starts to change our perspective and we we're safe Mm -hmm. with him. We can be honest with him. And then he starts to help us see them as they see them in wholeness Mm -hmm. and to lean in, in loving them in ways that bring out their better self instead of, you know, the broken part that we just encountered in that hard moment. And so I love that God invites us to be honest and lament and grieve when we need to in those human moments, but then we don't have to burden our people we love with all of those heavy thoughts and feelings. Yeah. So good. Yeah. It's so good. It's so good. And I mean, one of my favorite scriptures is where it says, "Be Im- therefore be an imitator of God. And that is what mm. we're trying to do here is we're trying to treat people and love and what we're talking about today, specifically our spouses, the way that, that God treats all of his people, the way that we saw Jesus treat the people he was with when he was here on earth. Jesus was frustrated with a lot of people and Jesus was full of love and full of grace and full of truth. And so yeah. let me pray for us as we finish out today. Uh, for all of you that are with us today. God, thank you for our spouses. Thank you that you are the one who invented marriage and you invented love. God, I pray that you will be the one who helps us with our self-control for our tongue and for our actions in all of our relationships and specifically in our relationships with our spouses. God, would you be the one that keeps us and our husbands molded together? God, thank you for the ability that we are all still growing and we are all still learning how to love better. Thank you for your son, Jesus, who is our ultimate example of love. And we pray all this in his name. Amen.